I'm really cold in here, so I want to keep my jacket on, but I'm going to swing the camera around a minute and get uh, get Phil's top tips of uh, bike for at home. So I've chucked my bike on the trainer, so... You ready? Yeah. He just wet his hair down. He's like, oh, I want to be old George Clooney for the camera. <laughs> Don't tell the paying public this. <laughs> okay, so why is bike fit important? Well, the first thing to say is that it's more important to some people than others, all right? But we'll come to that a bit later. Um, bike fit's important because you're adaptable and this is adjustable. I'm a physio who's looked after some pretty famous people. It was my job to make sure they're ready for Olympics and things like that. It takes a lot to change people to adapt you. You can do it, but it takes a lot of work, stretching, strength and conditioning, and so forth, so forth. Adjusting this is dead, dead easy. And one thing you really don't want to be doing is fighting against a bad setup on the bike. It's going to cost you power, might cause you pain, might cause you injury. So you definitely want this to be as optimal as it can be. In other words, working with you, not against you. Here's some general tips that might well make you work a hell of a lot better with your bike both in terms of power performance, being comfortable and injury free. The work for the majority of you, you've got some special issues, i.e. injuries, biomechanics, big asymmetry, you might need a specialist bike fit. But for the majority of you, I think these will work. Your saddle height is the most important thing if you ask me about any bike fit. Everything comes from that, okay? Problems you can have with that, why you might know that your saddle height isn't completely optimal or correct or might be a problem is that you might be suffering for example with low back pain because it's too high and you're reaching the front much more common though is seeing too low most people sit too low or too far back and that can result in knee pain so getting saddle height right is really important for anybody who's got knee pain it needs to be optimal it's also really important to power production remember two easy ways in which you can determine your optimal saddle height is to measure your inseam and then times it by 0.883. Now this is what commonly called the Le Mans method, and what it is is a very generic way of extrapolating out your, your height to what your saddle height should be. But it will get most people into that ballpark, at least you'll be better than just guessing. Second to that is sitting on the bike and putting the pedal all the way down to the bottom and then moving your foot all the way to the front so your heel is on the very front of your pedal with your leg straight. You adjust your saddle height until your leg is completely straight with your heel at the front of the pedal. The reason why that works is when you move your foot backwards the, the knee bend of about 30 to 40 degrees that we normally aim for in bike fit comes to the knee then. But it's a way that you can do it out of your home without all the fancy kit that we use. So in the middle of your foot? Yeah. I can't stand on it then. No, just there, the heel's fine. The heel's fine, so that's, it's just a very... <laughs> I can't stand on that little... <laughs> that little... <laughs> Look at that little thing that I've got to try and stand on, it's tiny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and where do you do it, just to the you groin? The, yeah, to the... My inseam is 84 and 33 inches. 40 times 0.883. And what's mine? 740. <laughs> we don't even need you, Phil. <laughs> hey, I've got business to run. <laughs> Next top tip is saddle tilt. We actually help design saddles in this room. I don't know of any saddle in the world that is meant to be used with the nose up. So your saddle should be flat or even two or three degrees down at the front. Now, why is that, right? Why would you be experiencing problems with tail tilt? Well, if the nose is up, basically your pelvis can't rotate forward and it forces your pelvis back, which means your lower back has to do all the flexion to get to the front. So if you're suffering with low back pain, check your saddle tilt, it could be really, really important. The other thing that's important, but the reason why it's important is it allows you to rotate forward and that brings your hips into the game and you're producing power when you're pedaling. So it can have a performance effect. Top tip for me was basically always make sure your saddle's flat. You can use a small level to make sure of that. Often your iPhone comes with a level. Key thing is, make sure you're measuring where you sit. If you sit on the front of the saddle, so you can easily look at this, where do I sit on the saddle? Right at the back of the front. It's that bit that you want level ever so slightly nose down. Now that's important to remember because obviously often saddles have profiles. You may feel wonder, well, where do I measure that? It's where you sit is the most important thing to allow you to rotate forward. Remember, one or two degrees can make an exponential difference in comfort. Another parameter of bike fit that's really overlooked quite often is your handlebar width, okay? Now, handlebar width is important to reach. It's not only just for aero reasons, you know, narrow handlebars do make you more aero, but reach is really important in comfort. Now, ideally, you can set yourself up on a turbo at home with a mirror in front of you, and you put your hands on the hoods here. That 
fit middle of your hand there, so you go right from the middle of your shoulder. And we'll take a picture of Katie doing this so you can see. And it's easy to have a look at that. Now, if your hands are outside your shoulders, your handlebars are too wide. And a common complaint with that is getting numb hands because you're splaying. But a more common complaint of having too wide handlebars is it increases your reach. So often, that makes it hard to reach the front end. And you might find you've been shortening your stem and stem and not understanding why the frame that you thought was right for you is too long. It's not. Maybe the handlebars are too wide. The other thing is that getting the handlebar right at the absolute right width makes it a demonstrative difference to how comfortable you feel in your upper body. So it can make a diff big difference to shoulder pain and neck pain. Too narrow is much less common, but if you are too narrow, your hands will be inside your shoulders, okay? You may have been experimenting being as aero as you can. When you get to that point, it feels incredibly hard and you get something called tricep pump going on and it can feel really uncomfortable. But I, one of the problems I had when I started doing more endurance was I used to get a really sore back. Yeah. And I came in to see you, and you're like, I think I had 40 centimetre bars, and you're like, you put me on there, you looked at it, and you're like, nope, you need narrow bars. So I've got 38, and yeah. I've never had that pain ever yeah. again. Like, yeah. it's such a simple and, solution. And you're absolutely right, Kate, and this is one of the cheapest things to change on a bike here. Your handlebar, you don't, as long as you're not going stupid, uh, expensive carbon, but you can experiment with changing the alloy, and it makes, as you said, it makes it, you can't, you can't believe how much two centimetres narrow makes a big difference, doesn't it? My other top tip is that I see more people set their position up to accommodate the wrong crank length and then for be not optimal, not comfortable, or not performance orientated more often than anything else. So crank length is really, really important, but obviously certain size bikes come with certain size crank lengths. If you're experiencing hip pain when you get off the bike, if you experience knee pain, if you feel like you can't get, achieve a high cadence easily, you find it hard to do that, those sorts of people might be might be on the wrong crank length because what it does when it's at top dead center, that's really gonna close your hip up massively. So that can cause hip and low back problems. And then if you feel like you can't get the cadence up, because it's a much bigger circle and you might be having to sit far back to catch the crank on the way back. And therefore it feels like you're pedaling a pedalo. It can also be a real barrier for you to get getting your satellite up and forward and connected with the front end of the bike because this is the block to it. Now we now know the research is fully out there that crank length makes no difference to performance in sub-maximal cycling, which is what we all do. All it does is slightly change your gearing. Remember my analogy, if I asked you right now, would you like to jump on a one meter high gym box 100 times, or this four inch step, either way I'll give you 100 pounds, which one would you choose? Exactly, this one. That is crank length. Again, this was when I had, I used to get really tight hips. And you were like, I think I was on 170, and you're like, just try 165. And I was like, really? And you're like, yep, yeah, just 165. And I was like, I will, I couldn't believe, like, again, like such a small difference made such a big difference like, yep. to how I felt on the and bike. And do you remember afterwards, Kate? It's one of those things that until you go back to a bigger crank length, you don't know how much of a difference it makes, is it? And yeah. you, I think you had to ride a different bike, didn't you? That was, it was this one. That, yeah. Those was cranks I had were 170, and I was like, oh, that was like my, what I used in winter. And I was like, I can't, I need to, I need to buy some cranks yeah. now because I just, I, I much prefer 165s. Yeah. And you also said that there's, like, there's no, there's not one negative, is there, to getting shorter cranks? No, and especially with this type, you know, the, the gravel scene that helps with clearance, you know, because your cranks are not over the floor. The only thing to remember is when you change your crank length, remember at the bottom, what we want to do is preserve all the openness at the top of the hip. So a top tip is if you drop your crank length five mil, just put your saddle up five mil because obviously the pedal comes closer and that's your real saddle height, your contact between there and there. But you're absolutely right. I mean, you know when you've been for a really long ride and we all get that, you come off, get off the bike and you feel a bit stiff when you get off, that's because your hips been really closed and this opens it up. So what people often notice is they don't get stiff in the low back when they get off the bike after long rides. That's it, man. What crank lengths do you run? I run 170 and I'm six foot four. Really? Yeah. See, so it's not to do with height, is it? I mean, to do with height. And I truly believe that industry will move forward as soon as the supply chain issues are sorted out. I mean, I mean if you think about it, there's Bradley's yellow jersey up there. He rode 165 in Rio for a team pursuit and he's six foot four as well. So, you know, so anyone out there is thinking, oh, I need to be... And if uh, people often think, we were all taught that crank length was important to torque generation. It is in the first two revolutions of, say, a team sprint. <laughs> not many of us are generating Chris Hoy type powers that slowly. <laughs> so yeah. it's not relevant there. I think the research shows you have to go down to 80 
in terms of size to see any difference in performance where we're based or up to 320 and we're so far away from that it's unbelievable so I mean it's good enough for you and Bradley Wiggins and I feel like <laughs> good enough for me <laughs> it's good. you and Brad you and Bradders I'd say him yes <laughs> it's turbo training season indoor everyone's on swift hammering away Here's my top tips on how to make that work for you and how maybe to improve your position fire as well. So first things first, it's indoor training, therefore the clues in the title, it's a very different environment. My top tip is, if you possible and when always, have a well ventilated room and use a fan. And the fan isn't just for your comfort, but here I direct it at your backside. Because if you've got loads of sweat going on and water, you can get easy to get skin breakdown type saddle lesions and we've seen loads of them in here. So that's a really, easy to do top tip there second one is because it's static it's a very fixed position therefore muscles get overloaded in the same place so if you do any off the bike work double down on it so any stretching you do um, release work with a foam roller all that jazz if you do that already double down it if you don't do it i would do it <laughs> if you if you start to do indoor training right you wouldn't believe how many knee problems I've seen with people who have been 20 years cycling, really got into Swift and turbo training, and all of a sudden have a knee problem, easily rectifiable by just dressing that tight muscle. Lastly, indoor training represents an opportunity for you to explore what is your optimal position. The reason being, you can change something on your bike setup, say your saddle height, or maybe your saddle height and how far forward it is, and you can monitor your power at the front. Now, most people in my experience, I remember I always say sit too low and too far back, and that's my experience of the people who walk in that door. So why not experiment by moving your saddle up and forward, as long as it's not causing you knee pain or discomfort, maybe we're really well surprised what happens here. And the advantage is you can change anything about this in the indoor setup relatively safely, because you can literally change it back if you don't like it. Unlike if you change your bike setup and you go out on a four hour ride and you're stuck and you have to get home and you end up with a raging sore knee or something like that. So it represents an opportunity for you to explore. Remember, everyone has a bike fit window. Do you know where you are in that window? Use the metrics, use the indoor train to find out. Thank you so, <laughs> thank you so much to Phil for his knowledge, his tips, his expertise. Any other questions, leave them in the comments. But any, any final words? Enjoy 2022 doing whatever you want cycling. Oh. I hope so anyway. That's really nice. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll sh if you want any other videos with Phil, leave kind of any topics that you want covering in the comments. And I'm sure we'll do some more videos this year. Yeah, sure. Of course we will. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs> you and your glasses on. <laughs> cool indoors. I and mean, it is cold indoors. It's freezing. It. I can't leave my coat on. You know, I know. You look like a spider, you do. Just doing the calculator thing, hold on a bit. You just gotta lean into the valve. Start again, sorry, I think I might be talking. Sorry, start again. It's alright. Oh. I thought you were. God, be professional, Kate. Okay? You gotta put that in, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I know you are. You know it.